Number six. Is that number six? Dang, that's a double limit, man. We made history today. <laughs> man, we got on a good pattern and a even better bite today. I want to show y'all how to do the rinse and repeat method. It's a drifting method. Uh, you can definitely do it if you fish out of a boat, but as a kayak fisherman, it's even more important because making these short drifts is a lot less work for us. We want to find the fish and then drift through it and then come back upwind and do it again. Usually when you find one fish, this is a good time to start the rinse and repeat method. And this is a good way to, to uh, catch more fish after you've caught that first one. So that first fish, a lot of people don't realize that there are more fish nearby almost always, almost always with redfish for me. And um, so I'm gonna show you how to really get on some of these fish. Once you find the fish, as long as they don't move, it's pretty easy. But at some point today, they moved on us. And so I moved and found them again, and we caught a few more. So I'm gonna show you the rinse and repeat here on Google Earth. It is easier in a smaller bay where you have shorelines and stuff because the shorelines have something that you can look at and give you an idea roughly where you caught those fish at. Even if you're catching them out here in the open, you might know, well, the wind's blowing this direction, and so you drifted this way. And so what I do is I look at this shoreline over here, and I look at this shoreline over here. And I try to figure out something different on that shoreline that I can use as a marker. So I can look at maybe a little grass point, maybe it's a stick, maybe it's an oyster bed, and I know where I caught those fish at, even though it's in the out in the open. Out in the open is a little bit more difficult, but not if you do it like this. So if you catch a fish right here where the circle is, go ahead and continue your drift. When you get to the other end here, or the other shoreline, Come back around, try to stay out of those fish, and then come back to where you marked that shoreline, something, you know, could be a cut or whatever, and start your drift again. So we did that, we made like six drifts and hooked up every single drift, and then all of a sudden we quit hooking up. So we had to move over and find the fish again, and I'm pretty confident that those fish moved out because they knew eventually they kind of I think that we eventually spooked them out of there um, so we just moved over and started drifting again and we hooked up a few more times the first step is to locate the fish and then start drifting so we found the redfish school I seen them in three different sections after it was a little bit of a slow start and once you locate them you go back upwind. Upwind means if the wind's blowing this way, so that wind's coming this direction, then going back upwind means going against the wind and starting your drift again. As we're coming through, we're looking and scanning the water and we're seeing mud stirs. Every once in a while, a mud stir, a mud stir, big mud stirs, it's redfish. And when you get out of those mud stirs, you start your drift again. The fish usually don't spook very far away, and even though we were running right through them, they were still hitting when we drifted through through again. So, so pay attention to the video, some of the things that I'm saying, going back upwind and stuff like that. This is exactly what we were doing. I had a trip with Robert and Wayne. I appreciate y'all for booking a trip with me. I'll see y'all again tomorrow. They book two days in a row. And if y'all want to book a trip, my website is cleanfunfishing.com. Thanks for watching and tight lines, y'all.
if you wanted to go back up wind and make another drift we're we're getting close to the end okay never mind just stay right there and hook up <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking we should make a little small move. Yep. I'll be thinking along that grass line, I ought to be seeing some uh, crawling. Uh, red. Yeah, I seen one bust off the shore and run off, but that was it. We'll try that other shore. We'll go. We'll start off drifting in the middle and drift to that other shore. I switched to the spoon too recently. Oh, there they go. They're way out there, Wayne. Big school of them. <laughs> they made a they made a big bust right out in there. I'm not seeing them now, but we can get upwind and drift through it. Uh, either one. Oh yeah, there you go. Yeah, cast right in there. You too, Wayne. <laughs> Dang, it's two different sets of them. They're in front of me a little bit. They're, they're not putting their tails up, but they did make a move and they're in front about 150 feet. Anything that you see move, cast at it. They're somewhere right in there. There you go. <laughs> you hit it right when he hit the water. Yeah. <laughs> Bounce it off his head. Yeah. Oh, he pulling some drag. <laughs> I love that sound. Yeah. That's what they call a sleigh ride. <laughs> it turned your kayak all over the place. Those fish just came in here from, from out there in the bay. That's a nice one, man. Did you get him? Yeah. All right, man. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, he's upper slot. 26. 26, okay. <clears throat> So go. You hold him by the tail. You grab him, and then you re and then you take the grips off, and then you set him in the water <clears throat> with that hand that's on the tail. Or you can do that. <laughs> He'll be okay. He kicked off. I think. <laughs> There's some out to the left a little bit too. To your nine or ten o'clock. Dang it, you see him over there too? Yeah. Robert, there's a bunch this way. You burning the spoon kind of fast? Okay. There you go. <laughs> Wayne got one. All right. It was Wayne's turn. Pull and drag. Yeah, he's still on. <laughs> Another nice one. He ain't done yet.
Yeah, maybe. There you go. <laughs> nice fish, man. Yep, I like it. I love it. <laughs> Let's go back upwind and do another drift. They got another one. Dang it. <laughs> well, I'm putting them on the perfect drift today each time. And then I'm just kind of moving around like I always do. They're hungry for that spoon, huh? <laughs> Another nice one. There you is. <laughs> it was a slow start, but put the fish in the boat. <laughs> Twenty-six. Twenty-six. All right, man. <laughs> well, we'll go back upwind again. We've already drifted out of the stuff that where they've been at. I finally got lucky. <laughs> I've been enjoying my new Pissafun carbon spinning reels. At only five and a half ounces, this reel is lightweight, but with a powerful 22 <laughs> pounds of smooth carbon fiber drag. Oh, oh, God. Good fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. Features a 6 2 to 1 gear ratio, perfect for burning spoons, wake baits, top waters, and soft plastics. I actually have owned one once before. It was a good reel, especially for the money. It's a Pissafun Carbon X2. It's a 2000 series, so it's kind of small and lightweight. Features a 10 plus 1 stainless steel bearings. Good drag, as y'all heard. The link is down below, so go check them out and use code CFF15 for 15% off your purchase. Good fish. He bumped it and I wasn't sure he was even on there. I just felt a little slack, so I sit. <clears throat> Golly, I can't even buddy. Trying to make the circle. <laughs> I don't want him to. <laughs> He'll get 
tired in a second. That's a big dude. Another one? Dang! <laughs> this one's freaking a tank, man. <laughs> we doubled up. <laughs> man, this, this dude don't want to get tired. Getting ready. Oh, yeah, that's a tank. Oh, yeah, that's a nice one. We're gonna measure him because man he's all the way to the top of the slot I believe just out of curiosity oh <laughs> just a little bit over thanks bud I appreciate oh, he was ready to go he's kicking off in my hand <laughs> Wayne's still fighting his. <laughs> Go check it out. That's your limit, Wayne. No, it's not. That ain't your third fish? Yeah, but I'm not stopping. No, we ain't gonna stop. <laughs> A limit as in three. Nah, we ain't gonna quit. <laughs> mine was 28 and a quarter. A little bit, a little bit over slot. Did I tell you mine was 28 or 26? You said 26. Okay. So then I guess my first one was probably 23. Yeah. 24. It was a little smaller. Yeah. This is just right in the corner of the mouth. Yeah. Mine, mine had it all the way down in there too. Y'all notice the pattern is that they're over there. Every time we go upwind and I and I put us at that certain yeah. area, we, we hook up. Once we I mean they do come over here too, but we're catching them over there yeah. today, so I'll give you this one a 24. So I got 24, 25, 26. 24, a 25, and a 26? Yep. Yeah, all mid slot. The reason why we drift is because those reds are moving around a little bit even though they're kind of in the same general area it's a big area and if you anchor you're expecting the fish to come to you but if you drift just keep rinse and repeating once you once you find a pattern Drifting over some. How did I miss him? I didn't miss him that time. <laughs> yeah, 
I didn't miss him that time. He <laughs> make that same cast whenever they you feel a bump. They still there somewhere. He gonna come all the way here and then and then go crazy. <laughs> Buddy, we'll let you go, man. Dang, you got it good. Whoa, I'm gonna sit myself with a spoon. <laughs> Later, man. We love you. <laughs> Robert, on the next drift, I want you to get in front of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to try to put you right on him. I was stirring mud when I was drifting across through there before I hooked into that last one. There were more in there. Oh, shoot. See the muster? That was a red. Go ahead and get in front. Like 75 feet past me, something like that, you know? Okay. I did see another mudster just then, so they're kind of spread out, I guess. holding your mouth right <laughs> I'm just kidding <laughs> Robert try to back out of there that way if he when he runs around he don't get get around your prop and all that uh, if you wanted to go back up wind and make another drift we're we're getting close to the end okay never mind just stay right there and hook up <laughs> I'll be quiet I won't say nothing else <laughs> Freaking double hook up again.
that's a lot easier to do when you don't have extra rods in the back you know i used to fish like that just with one rod it made things easier sometimes There you go. <laughs> Get him, Wayne. <laughs> but they ain't here thick today. He choked it. Good deal. <laughs> if they're flipping around like that and they and they go out, they'll make it. <clears throat> and if they're flipping and he keeps flipping around, you can you could toss him in too. Yeah, he'll be he'll be alright. He's still lively. Yeah, you see the mud stars? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Whenever it's a pretty big cloud like that, it's redfish. Sometimes drum, but it's reds. <laughs> as many as we've been catching. Have some grass on the propeller. I'm gonna go through here and see if I can find mud stars. If not, we're gonna move down a little ways. That was two drifts with no fish. <clears throat> I think maybe they moved, Wayne. That was two drifts with no hookup. They may have moved out that way a little bit. We're gonna go out that way a little bit. I just wanted to go through here to see if I spooked any to confirm that they did move. You got him? They got, got off? Yeah, they moved out here is what they did. Oh, there you go. <laughs> he hit it twice. They usually don't move far, you know, but... I don't always know. I just have to try it. <laughs> you got one? <laughs> Dang, man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Some days, man, I'm just freaking tuned into them. Of course, it helps when the bite is good. <laughs> you can be in a barrel of fish, and if they ain't biting it, it ain't going to matter what you know or do or with lures. I mean, at least that's just my experience. Number six. Is that number six? Dang, that's a double limit, man. We made history today. <laughs> <laughs>